Also, you paid a good game, though. Hey, come on, there's always next week. Nothing a little pizza wouldn't cure. Uh, Trish wants to know if we can give her a ride home. Sure. You want to call your mom and see if it's okay to join us for pizza? Sure, thanks. you never want to get. It's kind of like a game you can't win. I'll tell you more about it after we order. Come on, I'm starting. All right, I'm hungry, too. Now, I know you want pepperoni. I like cream pepperoni myself. What about you, Trish? Eat fine with me. And drink-wise, root beer's OK? Yeah, root beer's fine for me. OK, why don't you guys go find a table? I'll order. OK. Yeah, I'd like one small pepperoni. Mm -hmm. One small green pepperoni. OK, here we go. What did you mean, AIDS is like a game you can't win? Well, it's no game. Let's get that straight. I just meant that it's a disease that there's no known cure for. Uh, if you get it, it develops fully, you die. But they'll probably figure out a way to cure real quick, huh? Mm, I wouldn't count on it. I mean, it's worth hoping for, and they're working real hard at it, but I wouldn't count on it. Why is it so hard to cure? Uh, well, it, it, uh, it attacks your, your own defenses. It's, uh, it's like when you get a cold, you know, there's no cure for a cold. But it's your own body's defenses, your immune system, that battles the germs and eventually returns you to health. Think of it as, as if you were playing baseball against a team of cold viruses. <laughs> First, the germs seem to be winning. And the odds are you're not going to feel so great. But little by little, your body's natural defenses fight back and eventually win. So why can't you win with AIDS too? Well, because the AIDS virus prevents the body from identifying who the enemy is. I don't understand. What do you mean? Well, imagine, imagine that your body was a baseball team. And every one of your cells is a different player. Okay, listen up here. Our batting order. Ron is first. John is second. There are special cells in everyone's body that have the job of identifying outsiders out. and saying, Hey, you don't belong here. Get out of here. That's how the body deals with viruses and bacteria, in order to keep us healthy. I still don't understand why the AIDS virus just doesn't get thrown out, too. Yeah, I'd never let some other team's flyers sit in our dugout. Well, I'm afraid with the AIDS virus, you wouldn't have much choice. And I'm afraid the problem also goes far beyond the dugout. It's as if all your defenses are blindfolded by the AIDS virus. Now, any germ on the block could beat you. For that matter, any germ could win the World Series. Because any little old virus, bacteria, cancerous growth can hit a home run. Even on a bunt, the body is powerless to stop it. I still don't see why we can't just stop the AIDS virus in the first place. Hmm. Well, this virus is a tricky son of a gun. You know, it's like it doesn't play fair. What do you mean? Oh, how am I going to explain this? Uh, okay. 
Imagine your body was a house, surrounded by a fence. The fence would represent your skin. It helps keep things out, but not everything. Our bodies are always under attack, as it were, by a variety of viruses and bacteria. They take advantage of weaknesses, like when we get a cut, in order to enter our body. But that's okay, because for the most part, we can handle it. Within our body, white blood cells are on patrol all the time. If they catch an intruder, a special kind of white cell, called a helper T cell, is able to identify it as a troublemaker. Once the germ is positively identified, the helper T cell calls out yet another kind of white cell called killer T cells that are equipped to get rid of the troublemaker. Whenever you catch a cold, this is what's going on in your body millions of times until you're well again. Then why doesn't the body get rid of the AIDS virus the same way? Like I said, it's tricky. The AIDS virus fools the system, the immune system. If the AIDS virus gets into your body, and by the way, it can't do that easily, you have to be careless in order to let it in. But if it does get in, and it's caught by a white blood cell, it's subject to identification, just like any other intruder. This is when it pulls its big trick. At this point, it actually becomes part of your defense system. When it comes in contact with the helper T cell, which is responsible for identifying troublemakers, it immediately invades the T cell and becomes part of it. In other words, what appears to be a part of your defense system is now really the enemy. He's okay. By interfering with the role of identifying troublemakers, it now allows all manner of bacteria, virus, and cancerous growth to run amok. He's okay, let him go. In this way, the AIDS virus destroys our natural ability to maintain our health. He's okay, let him go. This is why the virus is so deadly. It doesn't kill you directly. It merely allows a lot of other things to kill you. Things that normally wouldn't harm a person with a healthy immune system. That's why you don't want to play around with this virus. That's why you can't win. That's pretty scary stuff. You bet it is. Can I get you another root beer? Sure. No, I'm fine, thanks. I'll be right back. Boy, if I ever find out somebody has AIDS, I think I'm going to stay about 10 miles away from them. I wonder what he meant, you can't get it easily. It sounds to me like there's viruses and stuff crawling all over us. How are you even supposed to know if somebody has it? I don't think I'll ever share a glass again. There you go. Well, now that we've heard all the bad news about AIDS, it's time to talk about the good news, huh? There's good news? Yeah, it's preventable. That's the good news. How? Remember that house I was talking about? You know, with the fence around it. Yeah, it didn't sound like that fence was doing very much good. Well, it does a pretty good job along with the natural defenses of our body when it's dealing with the virus and bacteria that are around all the time. But AIDS is different. See, AIDS isn't around all the time. And it can't just jump over that fence easily. Well, then how does it get in? As frightening as the AIDS virus is, for all the harm it can do, it can't get you. You have to go get it. The AIDS virus can't get through the gate unless you let it in. You see, it has to find a way directly from an infected person into your blood system. For that to happen, you have to engage in risky behaviors and be careless. That's like unlocking the front gate and inviting the virus in. risky behaviors and being careless what do i mean we see in the last few years it's become clear that there are two major ways of getting aids one is to have sex with someone who's infected with the virus that doesn't affect you guys and the other which i hope doesn't affect you either is taking illegal drugs and shooting them 
you know, in your arm with a needle. Because what happens, you see, is that people who do that, they share the needles. And when they share the needles, they share the virus. Sex and needles, that's it? Basically, yeah. By playing it safe and avoiding these kinds of behaviors, you're not at risk. The gate stays shut. The AIDS virus can't get in. And more importantly, you will probably never come in contact with the virus. So I couldn't get it from a glass or something like that? No. But what if someone sneezed on you? Same thing. And not to worry. You see, AIDS can't be transmitted casually, like other things can. I mean, it might be sneaky, but it's not strong. And if it gets exposed to air, it can't live. So it's highly unlikely you're going to catch it from a drinking glass or touching somebody or getting sneezed on. Remember, it has to get from an infected person's bodily fluids into your blood system. Now, that's hardly a casual event. So if you gave blood, you could get it? No, no, that, that's different. If, if you give blood or go to the doctor and get a shot, what they do is they take out a fresh, clean needle like this, and they use it, and when they're through with it, they throw it away. But I heard that some people got AIDS from getting a blood transfusion. That's true. That has happened. But in that case, they used a clean, good needle, but the blood was bad. But now that they know about that problem, they're developing tests to screen out the bad blood. So hopefully that won't happen. I still don't get it. What? If AIDS can be prevented, how come so many people have it? Well, you see, medical science has only just begun to understand this problem. And the other thing is that people who are capable of spreading the virus around may not know that they have it for years. So you see, it's given the virus a chance to sort of get the jump on us. But now that we know, you know, we're fighting back fast with research and education, stuff like that. Everybody's innocent when it comes to AIDS. It doesn't make you a bad person for contracting it any more than it makes you a bad person for catching a cold. It's just more serious and a lot more frightening. I can see why. Who wouldn't be scared of it? Most people certainly are. But knowing how you get it and how you don't get it is really important. Because while fear should motivate us to be careful about what we do, it's important to remember that we don't have to be afraid of normal contact with people who carry the virus. After all, they need our help. What can we do? Maybe I could go up and discover a cure or something. There you go. That's possible. That's possible. Actually, if everyone our age grows up and knows about the virus, and we don't do risky things like drugs and stuff, then the whole thing could just probably go away, couldn't it? That's possible, too. <laughs>